All right, some more on CSS and um, your GUI. Uh, in the previous video, I showed how to apply CSS directly to your widgets on an individual basis. The next question is, can we uh, apply it to the theme as a whole? And uh, the answer is yes. First of all, you have to find your theme that you want to play with. Um, and I'll go to uh, File System. I'll go to, uh, I'm on Mint uh, X, Linux Mint uh, X with Mate, uh, version 19.3, I guess it is, the latest one. Uh, but anyway, uh, so this is where it may be different, in other words, on your system. But go to USR, go to Share, and go down to Themes. Where's Themes? There we go. And you see all the themes. Now, I particularly like Mint X. You might like Mint Y. There's more Mint Ys. There's others in here. Some of these I don't think actually work, but um, they don't show up. Um, but anyway, uh, what I wanted to do is, since Mint Y is the default and it is a bit easier, I go down to Mint Y. And you can see if you drill down to GTK3, you can see some other stuff. I mentioned this in the previous video, but there is it. That's it. That's the theme. These are the icons. All right. Icons are a nightmare. We don't want to go there. Uh, but this is the theme. It's um, about 4,000 line, um, uh, 4, lines long. Uh, that's the theme, uh, the code for Mint Y. If I go back up here, why am I picking Mint Y? You can pick any one. Uh, actually, they'll all start out slightly different. But, um, well, since Mint Y is the default uh, for an installation, I figured I better start with it uh, as, a, as the basis. Um, Mint X, on the other hand, which is the one I actually like, if you go down here, you'll see it's a whole bunch of um, of CSS files. The principal one, GTK CSS, is a one-liner, and it simply starts importing the rest, which is okay, but I don't really need that kind of trouble. Uh, so essentially, I went to Mint Y, and I go down, stop that, uh, I go down, I don't know why it's having trouble, uh, that spinning thing. There it goes. I go down to GTK3, and I basically copied this. I'm not going to do it because I already have a copy. I copied it over to my directory. Now, I'll kill that, and I'll bring up the directory, which is uh, part 40A, as I'm calling it. And you see in the directory, I have a gtk.css. Okay? Um, this... Um, this thing here, I am not being not in use. It's a it's a graphic. I was playing around with the, again icons. Icons are a nightmare. Uh, so at the risk of causing problems, I'll just delete that. Um, and there's some old copies of the code, which I might as well delete right now to get the confusion down. All right. So basically, I've got a compile uh, script, which is similar to the ones I've used before. I've got the uh, full. Um, uh, well, I've modified it, but here it is. This is the, I'm, you know, you obviously can't see that, but it's the full um, Mint Y modified. Uh, there's my code. There's my Glade file. That's an executable. Uh, then there's, uh, there is, uh, I've, I've gone and put this into a resource. Um, you can load the, the CSS uh, from a file or you can load it from a resource. I discussed resources in an earlier video, but basically you have this XML file. And in this XML file, move it to the center here, um, it mentions uh, what it is I'm loading and part1.glade is being loaded and uh, gtk.css. And what, what it does is when the, uh, when the program gets uh, compiled, um, no, um, can I open it with some other application, please? Um, uh, and uh, where is the text editor? Um, in the... In the um, execute in the compile uh, there's an extra line here it was covered in an earlier video but this line right here glib dash compile dash resources it should be part of your package but you may have to load it um, it basically takes the um, resource docs uh, xml and it generates a file called part one resource dot c and that is a uh, is a coded version of what you provided you could have in here mentioning uh Gr uh, graphical images and so forth, in which case there would be hexadecimal representations of them. But it creates a file, part one um, resource.c, which is then part of the compilation. This is the compilation of the, um, of the um, example program. So, And you see this um, in, well, let's, uh, for example, let me, um, let me bring up what the re uh, part one resource.c, the thing that's created. 
and you see it's uh, it's an encryption or encoding. It's not encryption. It's just encoding. Um, a very long one too. It's all hexadecimal bytes, um, but it, text-wise, it's quite long um, of the material that was uh, the data from the uh, from that exercise. But anyway, so that is that's resource.c. Uh, part one resource.c and that becomes part of the compilation uh, which means when i go to my um, um, part one.c and i go down to um, um, see uh, uh, this is a gtk css provider load from resource now i'll get to this again but it's loading uh, it's not going to be loading from a file it's going to be loading from this resource, and the resource is that material that has been in, compiled into your module. So your module is fully self-contained. It doesn't. Con there's not multiple files if you're going to distribute it. Uh, the um, the large C file. Well, the the binary will have everything in it, and that's just one place. Where else do I do it? I guess no. I thought I had it someplace else. Um. Um. No, I guess not. What did I do up here? I guess uh, in the builder was the other place I was going to do it. Um, I loaded it from a file that should have been uh, switched over to a resource. I won't. The file is still there, but I'm loading it from the file, not the resource. Um, all you do is change that to, um, let's try it, um, uh, load from resource, and it, um, it there's some coding things, part one slash um, you can read up on how resources are compiled, but um, if you go back to the original thing, you'll see that there was a um, there was this uh, they're 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 stacked. Whoops, wrong one. Uh, under um, a pseudo, where is it? There it is. Um, you see the prefix part one up here. That's the prefix I'm putting in front of them. So anyway, um, that's the prefix, and um, let's see if that compiles. And it does. And does it run? Uh, you get a um, sneak peek of what we're going to look at. Uh, it does run. So yeah, now it's now I've loaded it from the resource. It's it's a minor point, but it's good if you're uh, like I say, if you're going to distribute a binary, and you don't want to distribute multiple files. Um, so when the binary loads up, it has to then go read files. Uh, it's better that the uh, that material is incorporated into your distributable. All right. Um, <clears throat> Where are we here? Well, I've got the, um, as I mentioned, I've got the uh, the GDK CSS, and you saw what I did, or you started to see it. Let's go back to the um, to the code here, and this is just a very small. Uh, how many lines is it? It's 52 lines of um, of uh, C code um, that implements this Glade over here, and in this Glade here, I've got a slider, I've got a regular button. And I've got uh, I've got a scroll bar, I should say, which contains a slider. And I've got a checkbox. Okay, three very simple things. These are not biggies, uh, but they're just for purposes of example. <coughs> All right. So um, the trick to applying the theme to your to your entire program to your entire GUI is right here. Uh, and what this is going to do is it's going to apply that GTK CSS to your GUI. Okay, everything. Um, now, what then? What you're going to do is go in and modify the GTK.CSS, and you'll have your own theme. It'll incorporate everything that was in the Y theme, uh, unless you modify it. Um, there is a little bit of variation. So if I had this up, uh, after I do this, I make a program, I use the Y theme, and then somebody change, changes their desktop theme to X, sometimes you'll see a little bit of changes on the uh, on the GUI that you wrote. That's because some uh, G Mint Y may not be uh, setting the values for all of the possible things that could be set in CSS for a, a graphical user interface, and Mint X may be setting some of those, or vice versa. I'm just saying I'm starting with Mint Y, and if you switch to Mint X, you might see some little variation. It's largely because of things Mint X is taking care of that Mint Y didn't, that Mint Y just let default. Uh, but when you switch over your desktop to being Mint X, uh, those defaults become the Mint X default. So it's minor, but it, it you can't. So if someone says, "Well, why wasn't it rigidly the same, regardless of which?" And that's what I'm trying to get at here: is that you build an application and you want it to be immune from what 
from people changing the back, uh, changing the themes, so they, that all your widgets aren't wandering around the, the screen. Uh, so that's where we're going. Anyway, you've looked at the code here. It's a CSS provider. I initialize it, uh, get the pointer, and then I load it from the provider. I'm, use, I'm, I'm using uh, loading from resource, uh, or you could load it from a file. It's all right, it doesn't matter. Um, so it's in the uh, the provider has been loaded uh, from the um, in this case the resource, and this is the trick code right here is that you um, style contest add provider for screen so actually i originally i thought that meant the whole screen no it actually only means as far as i can tell your screen and what it is is you get the gdk which is the actual desktop interface you get the default for your uh, for your program and uh, you um, put the provider in it and you set a priority um, which is user level priority as to um, who gets to paint it? Who's more important when it comes to deciding which uh, which piece of uh, CSS code to use? So user uh, priority is the normal one. You can look these up. There are others. Okay, that's it. And everything else down here is just uh, I didn't even I didn't even load uh, I didn't even extract for button uh, or excuse me for the checkbox. But uh, there's the scroll value um, um, thing there. There. So if uh, if the scroll value gets changed, it prints out on the screen. And uh, here is um, uh, this is the uh, what is this here? Oh, that's the provider that actually takes the um, that takes the provider and the widget and paints it onto the widget. And it's um, two lines of code, but I put it in a, into a uh, subroutine which I use it. It's, so in other words, up here you I'm calling. Um, uh, well, I don't do actually do it anymore. I guess I was I had some others I was playing with, but I actually don't do it here. Uh, no, I don't do it. Yeah, um, because the painting is being done by this um, GTK style context add provider, so that's taking care of it. That other function is for when you're in painting individual widgets with the uh, with a CSS uh, fragment. Okay, so that's the code. This is the key line of code here. It brings in the G the the theme. Which was originally, of course, a full theme, and it uh, applies it to your GUI in Toto. So at this point, if you made no changes, you are now Mint Y theme or whatever theme you picked, uh, and uh, your your you come up like that regardless of the change of of background themes by the user. Okay, well, let's get out of that. Now we have to go down. I'll get, get this off the screen, and we could probably get that off the screen. This, I'm in the actual GTK.CSS, as you can see down here. This is the one um, that I brought in, and I've started playing with it. Uh, first of all, as you probably know, I don't like gray backgrounds, and um, I've put little, I've commented out the original parts, and I've put triple X to indicate where I'd made modifications. So the, the default background for everything is gray. Uh, 255 is is uh, is the lightest color of the, the red, green, blue, and then there's the transparency. Um, but the uh, so 240, 240 is a very light gray. Um, I said no, let's have it red. FF. Um, this is the other way of doing color numbers. Um, uh, just make it plain old red. So when I run it, and uh, again I've compiled it, and um, and I run it there, you will notice that this the background is uh, arguably red. All right, so there is my red background. I'm obviously you probably don't want something that garish, but you can pick your background color, and that will stay there. All right, um, uh, let's see. Um, see where the next one is going down. Button. Here's where I obviously I did something to the button, as you can see. This is the code for a button in GTK. And first of all, I the minimum height, which is, uh, as you can see from the original, was normally 22 pixels. I made it 122 pixels, so it's going to be tall. That's just for example. You can do anything you want. But all of these things you can play with. You can play with the minimum width, um, minimum height, and so forth. Border, and um, instead of one pixel, giving it a nice discrete border, I said let's go over five pixels. Uh, the border radius. Um, radius it determines the um, sharpness of corners and if you increase the radius you're going to get a curved corner whereas uh, buttons normally are um, are right angles um so it's a, it's a pointy corner with a lit the original is uh, 3px so, which is a tiny little bit of curvature 133px it's going to get round um 
Let's see. I, um, did I play with padding? Uh, padding is the is the left right uh, left right top bottom um, extra pixeling, and I think I did. Those don't look normal. Um, I didn't put any X's on them. Um, color. Um, I decided to go with green text in the um, in in the uh, button instead of the default, which is. 30 30 30 30 which is a slightly less gray than 20 240 240 240 so um um so uh, it's a you know that was their original color you can see what i'm doing and you can do this too go through and hunt you have to hunt and pack to find things uh the border color which was a tiny little border and would have originally been um uh no i guess i've played with this a couple oh the original color down here is a gray another flavor of gray naturally um and uh, i decided okay uh, let's make it blue um let's see uh, and then a uh the, the the background image i added this line it wasn't in the original um on the button and i went to one of these radial gradients with yellow and blue uh and um the background color is as as white smoke but the image overtakes it um and there would be down here the background image for um, for hover. Okay, we um, no checked. Excuse me. When when you check it here, I think that's where we are. If I read all this code correctly, I um, it kind of revert. This is the uh, this is the same image, but in uh, the yellow and blue have been reversed. But you can see what I've done. I've kind of messed it up. Um, now if I go over here, you can see it when I run when I. Um, here we here we are. You can see first of all, it's really oval. There's the the radius. It's um, not squared off. You see the background image is yellow in the center, blue on the outside. You can see the text is green. Um, this is this is just an ordinary uh, button with, uh, with with a uh, with an icon in it. And if I move over at the hovering, uh, I played around with the hovering as to what happens. Um, I think I played around with the hovering. Maybe that's just normal. But anyway, the hovering you can play as to what's going to happen. <clears throat> and finally, when I click it, you can see the animation goes, it reverses. It goes, I'm holding down the button. It goes to blue in the center and yellow on the outside. So um, there is a um, rather large comical looking button. But the point of which uh, of this is to, is that... Once you get the theme, you can mess around with the theme and, and, and set the defaults for the buttons. This will be the defaults for all the themes in your buttons. Let me go back in here again. Um, so, uh, yeah, there it is. And now I'm going to change the back desktop background, which is always explosive on um, the system. So I'm in, uh, my theme is uh, Mint X uh, with um, Windows ME borders and icons or GNOME. So I'm going to go down and hit Mint Y. It's going to change all that. Watch the watch the uh, the image here. Uh, watch the GUI and notice that very little changes. There was a slight change. There was a slight edging change. There must be one additional uh, background edge here. Um, oh, the 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 default background on the slider changed too. Uh, it's probably another from white to uh, to whatever color that was. Um, I suppose if I if I were to uh, what did I pick there. Mint, um, I wanted to pin, let's mint Y, uh, Aqua, I don't know, I thought that might uh, see some uh, color on the screen, I don't, but, you know, there's some minor changes, uh, which I can nail down, because once I see the change, I can go find the GTS, GTKS uh, uh, that I haven't been, that I didn't nail down, and uh, force it to be what, um, what I want it to be. Uh, many of these are defaulting to what the system says. All right, so, uh, so I'll go back to Mint X, and I won't bother changing the. Um, well, um, in in terms of the uh, you know customizing the icons, or, or it uses Mint X icons, obviously. Um, I want to change to GNOME. You see, the, the the only icon here is the preferences icon. If I go to high contrast, you'll see that changes, and if you see if I go to Mint X, it changes again. So the icon appearance um, is depending upon which icon set has been saved. And uh, it's kind of difficult to override that. It can be done. Um, and you, it's more easy to just go put your own icons in. All right, so uh, next one <coughs> be the slider. You can see I'm, the slider was gray against gray. It was almost invisible. Um, so um, let me see what next comes up here. Um, yeah, here we are into the uh, here we're into the scroll bar. I keep calling it a slider. It contains a slider, but it is a scroll bar. First of all, what I did there is I uh, threw in a trough. 
uh, minimum width of five pixels, uh, background color yellow, um, border radius of 10 pixels. And what did that look like? You can see um, you can see the background color is yellow. Uh, the padding and other things are not really showing up. I could put in a um, a, um, a border ra radius, uh, and that would uh, instead of being squared off at the end, it would be um, it'd be rounded and so forth. But yeah, see with the trough, I am into. Um, oh, I do have border radius here. Um, I think that should uh, should have seen something more. Um, let's, see, uh, let's make it a hundred and see what happens. I think that has an effect. Um, I don't know. Some of these things you have to. It's a lot of trial and error to figure out. Um, Exactly what they're No, it's not having any effect. Um, so uh, that's not where the where the ed where the edging is ta is taking place. So I don't know where it is. I'd have to sc uh, find it. It's around someplace. Uh, the scroll bar itself down here. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, first of all, the margin um, was four px uh, of, tra of transparent. I made it four pixels of blue. That's why there's that blue around the edge. You can see that grayish around the edge. I don't know where that's coming from. It's coming from around here someplace. But I'm, you know, you can hunt for it. But that gray edging is um, someplace. It's a, who knows? It's, again, you have to trial and error to get it. What else? Um, uh, that's, okay, I'm in, um, excuse me, I am in the, I keep forgetting I'm in the, I'm in the, sli in the slider, I'm in the uh, scroll bar. Uh, so I'm looking at the button and I'm seeing the gray edge, but um, all right, the, um, um, the border is blue. You can see the, uh, the border around the, um, the scroll is uh, blue. And then when I start moving it, you can see the uh, thing respond. Uh, so yeah, that we did that. All right. So um, again, I'm not going to do all the possible things. It's, it is tends to be trial and error to figure out what each of these things has as an effect on the screen. But um, this is where you're going to find them. And it, um, once you've nailed them down, you've nailed them down. And if you mark it so that you can, you, know, you can find what you did. The next one is buttons and or check buttons. And this also applies to radio buttons. Um, is you know That's pretty ordinary. But... Um, is that uh, if if you if you just bring it in as is, it won't work. This uh, check is oddly enough the unchecked version of a button, and this is this is a regular checkbox. Uh, a radio button is the same; it'll say radio check or something like that. Uh, but I, they're comparable. But anyways, a regular checkbox, and um, it comes in with this code. Okay. Um, the icon source, and it gives a URL, and that URL is supposed to point into apparently uh, the uh, the assets of the uh, of of the of the file. There's a file, so there's a subdirectory called assets uh, in the theme, and you'll see it there over on um, in slash user slash theme slash slash share slash themes. Uh, it'll be down there, um, and that's where it picks up these. Uh, these uh, this is the unchecked uh, .png and there's two of them because it's it's possible to it's set up to scale them so that the the button can get bigger or smaller it doesn't really happen very often um, and um, but uh, but anyway it's um, and the it gives the icon source the problem is uh, the way we just done it if this is turned on you will see nothing it's not getting the icon for unchecked. If, however, you comment it out, it defaults back to the system, and you will get what the system shows. So um, the system uh, for a checkbox is an X, and um, let me uh, let me just go over to Mint Y, and uh, and on Mint Y you see it changed to a check mark. Okay, which is what Mint Y normally does. Uh, the point I'm making is that by removing it. Here from the uh, the specification from the CSS, it, def it 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 defaults to whatever the underlying theme should be, and uh, that's an X in a mint uh, X, and it's a check a, ch a check mark in mint Y. So, so uh, if you if you have it in there, um, and I'll remove these comments here. Be careful of comments. Um, oops. Um, uh, funny things can happen because they. Uh, the scan, the this, this, the parsing of a GT of a CSS file is not all that great, um, and, and you can't have comments embedded within comments or anything like that. Um, so we'll uh, get rid of that and we'll compile it again, and um, we'll uh, run it again. And you notice it's missing. 
missing gone all right um so uh point being um that it can't find these um uh, these icons i have not figured out I, I i can get it to find the icon in the url if you put down a fully explicit par path saying file colon uh, slash 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 the final slash being the root home slash your name slash directory slash until you actually get down to the file uncheck dot ping it'll work um, but you don't want to give a fully explicit trying to get the relative paths, paths to work i've had no luck there is a way of attempting to do it relatively they say it should work it hasn't worked for me uh, it's in there someplace i just haven't figured it out but nonetheless uh, you can put an explicit path down there you can also put your own icons in there um, and if you go into the icon browser okay slight edit here um going into the icon browser which i have on my desktop you can uh, download it i think i mentioned on a previous one <coughs> And you can pick from, there's a lot of different icons in here. I'm going for the emotes. Um, and let's say face laugh. Uh, that's its name, face laugh. That's the important thing. <coughs> and uh, over here, um, I am going to, I've pasted it. <coughs> this is from a different, um, a different piece of code. <coughs> that's how you do it. It's icon theme. GTK icon theme. Uh, any of those icons that are part, part of the standard system icons you can put in there with icon theme. And uh, let's see, um, compile it and run it, and you see the um, it's a happy face. Uh, if I click it, uh, well, nothing happens when I click it uh, because what? Uh, let's um, let's go down to. Uh, to uh, paste that back in but we're going to change it to um, I think face plane um, I think that was one of the other ones there and um, you gotta give it something to hang on to whoops it's not uh, I have to start I have to shut it down before I compile it all right there is my um, you see the face changes so forth and you can put any emo any icon in there it's a part of a standard system icon uh, getting into the uh, into the theme icons uh, at the moment, uh, all you have to do is you'll have to just back out and let the default uh, appear. But uh, let's see, let's could do a, a change in background, and I'm in I guess Mint X, and we will go to Mint Y and see if anything changes. Nothing. A few things rearranged a little bit because this icon is not exactly the same size. The icon spacing is a little different in the due to different themes but it's uh, fairly negligible uh, hopefully i can figure out how to get the icons to, um, uh, to to come up better than they have but there you are uh if you have a if you want to lock your gui down completely get a theme modify the theme and then incorporate the theme into your gui and then you've pretty much locked it down and you're immune from uh, people actually going in there and fidgeting with the backgrounds and with the underlying theme and making your GUI look silly. All right, that's enough for today.